I would like to thank one of my subscribers, Julio Garcia, for sending this story. You know, this opioid plague has been going on for about 20 years now. And they've spent more than a trillion dollars on it over the last 20 years. And it's still going strong. And here's what I want to always clarify to each and every one of you. Whenever you hear their number of 63,600 deaths or 300 deaths, I want you to know it's only based on 22 states and the District of Columbia. And this is directly from the CDC government site. Only 22 states in the District of Columbia report their opioid deaths. It is not all 50 states. So they are seriously downplaying that number. The number they're giving us is probably triple the amount of what they're telling us on a yearly basis. All states are not obligated to report to the CDC. It is really a voluntary thing. So 22 states are reporting their numbers. The other states are not reporting anything to the CDC. So I just want to make this very clear by even showing you the website mm -hmm. and showing you how they base the overdose deaths only squarely on the 22 states in the District of Columbia, which is, of course, not considered as a state. All right, so now let's get into the story that was sent to me. All right, so this is dated June 14th, 2018 from thehill.com. The severe economic cost of the US opioid plague. And believe me, it is very costly. The opioid plague that continues to ravish the United States affects every state in the country and has left almost no community untouched. In 2016 alone, the United States witnessed an average of 115 deaths per day due to opioid overdoses, a number that surpasses the number of road traffic deaths and is contributing to the stall stalling gains in the life expectancy in the United States. Now, they said the life expectancy dropped by two years. Ladies and gentlemen, that's another thing I really seriously believe they are downplaying big time. You know, just understand you're never going to get the full proof. Um, they're not going to give us the truth. Just know that every time we get these stories, it's in half truths. I do believe eventually the truth will come out by chance, but this is not the time for them to reveal it. But I really do believe it's going to come out and you're going to realize how bad the numbers are. Okay, while in the United States is far from the only country dealing with the consequences of opioid abuse, the American experience stands out compared to other advanced uh, economies due to the significant higher economic and human costs. Remember, the biggest consumers on earth are right here in the United States. All right. So just keeping all of that in mind, and we know the negative impact that this plague is having, it's affecting everything, okay? So the negative impact in the U.S. is uh, the loss of wages. Remember, a lot of these companies are complaining about not finding adequate um, employees. Many of them cannot pass the pre-employment drug test, many of them on jobs. If they give a surprise drug test, they fail and they have to let 
staff go. So it's impacting productivity in virtually every single sector right now. Incarceration is now being increased because, you know what, let's face it, if you're a drug addict, like I said before, in the past, in many of my videos, you're going to run out of money. Drug addicts always run out of money. As soon as they run out of money, they turn to crime. It is inevitable. It's unavoidable. And decrease productivity estimates suggest that this could be around 40 billion a year is being lost on this opioid plague. $40 billion a year. That's a lot of damn money. That is a lot of money. Okay, so on the other side of the fiscal ledger, lost productivity also has effects on tax revenue. Estimates suggest that a combined impact reduced federal, state, and local tax revenue by almost $16 billion in 2016. So this thing ain't going nowhere, ladies and gentlemen. This is one thing they will never be able to conquer. And if you go back in history, there have been opium plagues in America for the last 150 years off and on. So if this is something that keeps reoccurring in the country for the last <clears throat> 150 years, it ain't going nowhere. It's not going nowhere. Even if they claim they beat this, it's coming back. It's go back and look at history. This opium um, war and everything that's been going on in America has been going on for 150 years now. You can look back in every century, there has been an opium plague and it's wiped out probably by now millions of people in this country. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if over the last 20 years, it's well past a million people. But again, they are not going to tell you this at all. When addiction leads to criminality, the consequences of a felony record can drastically reduce employment possibilities. Public outlays are also incurred through costs of policing, law enforcement, and other public services in dealing with drug overdoses and addiction treatment. And don't leave out Narcan. They are spending a fortune to keep Every single um, EMT unit with Narcan, your police are carrying Narcan, your fire department, they're carrying Narcan. A lot of the sheriff's departments in this country, they're carrying Narcan. They're spending a fortune to keep the flow of Narcan all over this country. So that that right there is racking up millions and millions of dollars just doing that alone. And on top of that, they're now putting Narcan in all of the pharmacies and supermarkets so that the average citizen can also carry Narcan. I mean, and not long ago, if you remember, I did a story on the attorney general saying everybody should be carrying Narcan. This includes taking children into care when uh, parental neglect occurs. So that they're talking about children going into the foster care system. And we know it's like an explosion of white children going in because parents, either one parent or both parents are doing drugs. All right, we're gonna go and listen to this video. Let's see if I can. The opioid epidemic. It's the deadliest drug crisis in American history killing about 90 Americans every day, roughly the same number as car crashes. Here are short answers to some key questions about the crisis. What exactly is an opioid? 
Opioids are a class of drugs that interact with opioid receptors on nerve cells in the body and brain. They regulate pain and affect the brain's reward or pleasure system, which can make people feel high. That makes opioids powerful painkillers, but also extremely addictive. So what is the crisis about? The current crisis started in the 1990s with the overprescription of opioid painkillers like Oxycontin. Over the next decade, a growing number of people became dependent on these drugs. And for many, what started with pills grew into a heroin addiction. Then in 2014, potent synthetic opioids like fentanyl began entering the drug supply in large amounts. Where's the crisis most severe? It's worse in the Midwest, Appalachia, and New England, but it really is a national problem. Synthetic opioids are continuing to enter new markets, especially in the Northeast and South. Why has it gotten so much worse in recent years? Decades of opioid overprescription, an influx of cheap heroin, and the emergence of fentanyl, a synthetic opioid that is 50 times more potent than heroin. Shouldn't we just stop prescribing opioids? Not necessarily. Opioids have improved the quality of life for millions of people, particularly cancer patients and those with acute pain. And suddenly removing access to opioids from those who are dependent on them to function could easily push people to more dangerous opioids like heroin or counterfeit pills. So what can be done? There are many variables, but any solution would require controlling the distribution of prescription opioids, expanding access to medication-assisted treatment, and making naloxone an overdose antidote more accessible. In addition, more controversial ideas like drug checking services or supervised injection sites may be necessary to slow the rise in overdose deaths. All right. Well, you can tell this one was kind of old. It said 90 a day. Let me just look for something else before. Okay. Now, according to... This is an article that came out January of this year. And this also um, matches up with the opioid commission that Trump put together. They said it was 175 deaths per day. But since it's been several months, in my opinion, it would have had to go up even higher than this. So this thing is a mess, y'all. This one, this article that you're looking at is dated February 2nd, 2018. So we are in June. So chances are it's definitely past 175 per day. But please tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell. If you can support my channel, please do. And I will see you on the next video. Make sure you share the video and like the video, ladies and gentlemen. Peace.